devil never cry. What is up everybody? It is me Devil Never Cry and we are back with another Elden Ring video, this time going over patch 1.03, which promises to include a bunch of bug fixes, quality of life features, and the dreaded content balancing changes. In other words, all of the overpowered and cheesy tactics you've been using to carry yourself through Elden Ring, yeah, they're pretty much gone now. There's a few key things I want to highlight from this list, but if you want to check it out in its entirety, I'll leave a link down in the description. So with all that said and done, let's dive right in. First up on the list, and something that's arguably important, is a quest resolution. Those of you may or may not know that the Nefeli Lu and Kenneth Height quests were bugged. In fact, players earlier this week took a look at the game files and found that the natural conclusion and the next steps to these quests were in the game files for Elden Ring, but From Software simply didn't enable them, meaning that no matter what the players did, they couldn't progress the quest further. Well, with patch 1.03, that seems to have finally been fixed. Another additional element that I want to touch upon that they've added is the ability to record an icon and the name of an NPC on the map when you encounter that NPC out in the lands between. I say this is somewhat controversial because a lot of people have been really enjoying the minimalistic approach that Elden Ring has taken when it comes to encountering people and their quests. Many people online have stated that they've been keeping their own physical journal, jotting down details in regards to where NPCs are and what they perhaps might need to do to further their quest. On the other side of that coin, there's been a lot of people who have been angry at the fact that there is no way to record encounters and that people simply just find it too easy to forget where they've encountered an NPC or what they must do to continue or further a quest. And it seems as though From Software were listening to this discourse and added in the ability to help you remember where NPCs are. Pressing on, there's a whole list here of bug fixes which I won't delve into all too much, other than mentioning that they have included performance improvements in this section, which, as many of you know, the PC version of this game has been struggling greatly. In fact, a lot of people were struggling to get this game up and running on PC, and to say that it was Unoptimized, I guess, is putting it rather lightly. Some PC players have already stated that patch 1.03 has provided a noticeable performance improvement, so here's hoping that this fix applies to the majority of the community and all the PC issues are finally put to rest. And now, everybody's favorite section, and likely probably what you've clicked on this video for, the balance changes. Before we get to some of the heartbreaking and soul-crushing decisions that From have made here, let's start with some of the positive things, like increasing the drop rate for smithing stones for some enemies. Along with that, they've also added smithing stones to some early game vendors to help you along with your quest when you're first starting out. Personally, I think the smithing stone change is a great addition. Having looked at a lot of people's first impressions or early footage of them playing Elden Ring, a lot of people struggle to find the resources they needed to upgrade their weapons when first starting out, meaning that they struggled a lot more than they needed to. Personally, thanks to the route that I took throughout the lands between when first starting out Elden Ring, I didn't have all too much of an issue finding the upgrade resources that I needed. But seeing as it's included here in this patch notes list, I'd imagine this is an issue that has plagued the wider community and something that a fair amount of people have been complaining about. But with some of the positivity out of the way, let's get into the things that they've nerfed, starting with the Hoarfrost Stomp Ash of War. Now it's no surprise that they've finally nerfed this. The Ash of War hits a large range, does decent damage, and hits multiple times in fact, and also provides the Frostbite ailment which just compounds on the damage that it does. If you've been keeping up and watching some of the speedruns for Elden Ring, you'll know the Hoarfrost Stomp Ash of War, because a lot of people tend to go for the Ice Rind Hatchet, which contains it. A weapon that's fairly decent in and of itself, but is great when taken into account its Ash of War, especially when it is fully upgraded. In fact, it's a weapon that can carry you up until into the end of the game. But the nerfs don't stop there. Up next on the list to be cut down is the Bloody Slash Ash of War where not only have they increased the self-inflict damage that it does when triggered, they've also lowered the amount of damage it does and increased the time it takes to cast the Ash of War. 
Again, this is another Ash of War that I'm not surprised that they've nerfed, and it's something that I've got a lot of personal experience with after stumbling onto it my first playthrough and using it up until I finally finished the game. Not only does it do a stupid amount of damage, but it also has an incredible range to it. Does it suck that they've changed it? Yeah, it does. Was it predictable? 100%. Up next on the list of broken dreams and crushed builds, we have the armament Sword of Night and Flame. In particular, its weapon skill. Now, again, something I'm not surprised that they've nerfed. If you've seen a lot of the broken build videos people have been making, a lot of them include the Sword of Night and Flame, especially because its weapon skill can hit for well over 3k in some instances. No doubt From Software has taken note of this and they've decreased the damage that its weapon skill does overall. And the last nerf on this list I want to talk about, one that no doubt many people will hurt when they hear it, is the Mimic Tear Ash and how they've nerfed it into Oblivion as well. Not only have they decreased the damage that the Mimic Tear Ash does, they've also changed its behavior pattern, likely making it far less aggressive. I don't think anybody will argue when I say the Mimic Tear Ash was entirely broken. It could literally solo bosses for you and made any encounter that it was summonable in far, far easier than it would be if you were to tackle it by yourself. Not only did it help with pulling aggro from enemies, it did a ridiculous amount of damage and also had a large health pool to back it up. And so yeah, it's understandable that From Software would nerf this, but I was really hoping that they wouldn't. And at the very end of this patch notes list, we get a rather ominous entry where it states, other enemy and weapon balance changes included, which put in more simpler terms means there's a whole other bunch of things that we fucked with, but we're not gonna tell you. You're just gonna have to play, find out and see for yourself. One other interesting omission from this patch notes list that I'm surprised to not see is the Comet Azure Glintstone Sorcery, AKA the Kamehameha spell or the Beam of Death as some people call it. It's the spell that you've seen in a lot of broken build videos. Now I think there's a couple of reasons why this could have been omitted. The first of which is that maybe they thought it was balanced because to use the spell you need well over 60 int to even attempt it, which is a fairly large stat investment. And to be honest, if I pumped 60 int, I damn well want to use a spell that can do stupid damage. Or maybe they have nerfed the common Azure sorcery and they've just not put it into the list and decided to include it in the other weapon balance changes entry at the bottom there. I guess we're just going to have to play and find out for ourselves. Thankfully, respecking is a thing in this game, so if people's builds are now broken and no longer working after all these nerfs, at least you have the ability to reinvest your stats somewhere else and go for a different approach when it comes to tackling Elden Ring. But that is going to do it for this video. Again, if you want to check out the full patch notes list, I'll leave a link in the description. If you enjoyed today's video, do be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as it all helps out the channel. With all that's said and done, it has been me, Devil Never Cry. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, and as always, I'll see you all next video.